What's up guys, it's your boys Wolkie back out with another Chris Watts video. But today is I want to take a look at obviously the discussion of uh Michael Rourke, the, the DA. I'm not stating and in any way that this man doesn't know his job. This man is a professional, the DA, whatever have you. But there's definitely a lot of discrepancies up in the air about on certain sides of what people believe in, about his um I would say involvement, but there's apparently that I've heard from other people that he knew Nicole Kessinger's father. He was related to possibly the the Kessingers. We're good. We're just, there's a lot of things that go up in the air when it comes to the DA and why this um, NK was not continued to be investigated where he put a stop to everything we heard that from da or not da but tammy lee that one of the lead investigators in the case with chris watts um uh, but the da and his discretion or his discussion about after chris watts is sentencing um i definitely want to look into that there's obviously other uh detectives on here and uh police officers that definitely did a tremendous amount of work in doing this they probably will never ever be the same because of what they have seen, what they have heard, and so forth like that. But before we go any further, if you guys could do me a solid favor and subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting the wiper icon down at the bottom right, hit the bell icon next to it. So when I do post videos like this one, you guys will get that little ring notification that's we'll keep myself has posted that video. And then you guys can watch, comment, like, and share. And again, I want to reiterate that we are doing this for more of what we've been learning from Detective. Uh, or deceptive detective and watching people's mannerisms, the way that they present themselves, the wording and the, the just the overall looks of how people act and interact during said uh, press conference after the uh, Chris Watts sentence. And so with that being said, let's get into the video. I want to introduce the folks that are up here with me um, and then um, we'll, we'll get into the press conference. Um, to my right is Will County Coroner Carl Blesch. Um, to my immediate right. What he, this man right here, the coroner, had seen, I couldn't imagine what he has gone through. Right, Detective Dave Baumover from the Frederick Police Department. And that man. Chief Deputy. This man right here, that one that is standing right next to uh, the coroner and DA Rourke, this man retired because of how bad this went. went. District Attorney Steve Wren, Deputy District Attorney Pat Roach, and from the Frederick Police Department, Sergeant Ian Albert. Um, Sergeant Albert has been the PIO um, from the Frederick Police Department. I first want to invite him up to say a few words, and then I'll uh, comment about this morning. Sergeant Albert. Well, good afternoon, and thank you. Uh, I'm only here to issue this statement, and upon doing so, my agency will not be conducting inter inter any interviews or answering any questions on the matter. On behalf of the men and women of the Frederick Police Department, I would like to thank our fellow law enforcement agencies, the countless citizens, and all those who contributed to this tireless investigation. It was a combined effort in serving justice today. In the names of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico, today I am proud of the determination that was put forth by all those who worked with us on putting this man away. His deplorable actions were fought back vigorously by honest police work coupled with the goodwill of caring and loving people. But most importantly, however, act of evil. I just pray that our efforts have brought you all one step closer in doing so. Thank you. Definitely very wholesome. As you all, I'm sure, are aware, um, the defendant in this case this morning was sentenced to um, three consecutive life sentences. He's never plus getting a 48 out. 48 year sentence for the unlawful termination of a pregnancy as it relates to uh, Nico Watts. He was also sentenced to 12 years on each of the three class three felonies for um, unlawful tampering with the deceased body. Um, those being uh, Shanann, Bella and Celeste. All of those counts ran consecutively for a total of three consecutive life sentences plus 84 years in the Department of Corrections. This afternoon, um, with the cooperation of um, the Well County Coroner, the autopsy reports will be available and become a public document. There are a few things that I want to talk about that you will see that are contained within those autopsy reports. Um, I'm going to be very general. Um, Which is at this scary. Point, I hope you understand out of respect for the Rusick family who is still present. Um, part of the reason that we kept these sealed were for the following reasons. 
you will see in the autopsy report of Shanann Watts that forensic um, toxicology testing indicated that in spleen blood there was a blood alcohol level of 0 0.128. I want to be abundantly and very, very clear about this. This does not mean that she consumed alcohol, nor that she was intoxicated. It means that she, it was because of when she died, methane and all that stuff was produced. Um, we have consulted with the Weld County Coroner's Office. We have cons conducted with the forensic experts at the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. To a person, they have all indicated to us that that blood alcohol level is very, very consistent with normal human decomposition based upon the location and the manner um, that Shanann and Nico's bodies were buried. Secondly, you will see in the autopsy reports of Bella and Celeste a number of different substances, I think is, is probably the way, Oil. Mr. Blush, that I want to address those. Gasoline. Um, we have had those examined by both um, expert chemists as well as the coroner's office because we wanted to make sure that all of those substances could be attributed to the crude oil and the water that their bodies were found in and nothing more. Uh, the forensic experts uh, confirmed for us that all of the substances found in those toxicology reports are consistent with being submerged in unrefined crude oil. Crude oil. Mr. Blush, any other comments you want to make no, about that at this point? Well, Thank you. Um, other than that, I'm happy to take questions. Obviously, um, from our perspective, justice was more than served this morning. The defendant Besides is now Nicole. headed exactly where he belongs, which is a life sentence in prison without the possibility of parole. So I'm happy to take questions. Um, I'll, I'll certainly uh, call upon Mr. Blesch. Also, what I can tell you is that because of a whole host of reasons, not the least of which is we're not operating in, a, in the CSI TV world, oftentimes we can't determine exactly when um, or uh, a time frame for cause or, or time of death. Particularly, Why? I think that that was complicated by where all of the different bodies were found and the amount of time that passed before their remains were recovered. I agree. Well, we know that they were deposited in the locations where they were found in the early morning hours of August 13th. They were recovered on August 16th. That's, why, that's, that's the best I can tell you from a timing. Mr. The girlfriend you referenced in court, can you give us a better uh, idea of her role? So the girlfriend being the second question. Even the news reporters even said it. She originally came forward and... and spoke to investigators on her own volition to better her prior name prior to the time unfortunately that she came in and spoke with investigators she had deleted all of the information off of her phone that had any connection between her and chris watts that hampered the investigation i want to re reiterate he said hampered the investigation like that is a federal crime you caused problems in a federal investigation um, that hampered our ability to get that electronic digital um, connection between the two. She was interviewed on multiple occasions. I believe that for the most part, she was. For the most part? Why can't we hear for 100% that she was cleared and she's innocent? For the most part. And then Tammy Lee even said that they stopped the investigation. Everything was stopped. There's so much more evidence forthcoming in the course of those investigations uh, we don't have any reason to believe that she had any prior knowledge or involvement but in the why death of Shanann, bella celeste and nico um i think that's the best way i can answer that yes sir how and why and I don't think he'll ever answer those questions. Like I said in the courtroom this morning, and I think that the Rusick family said it very, very well as well, I don't think he will ever tell us. I don't think he will give an honest assessment of why he did what he did, um, how he did what he did. MK. Um, I, MK. I intentionally called upon him to see if he would answer those questions in the courtroom this morning. His mo both his mother and, and through their attorney, his father said that they hope that he will be honest and come clean someday and, and give us a, an account Still has yet to. because I think, like I said this morning, those are the questions that will always haunt anyone who was involved in the investigation. And I don't think that there is ever going to be a 
satisfactory answer for anyone, not the least of which is the Rusa family. I don't have any information about any pre-planning or anything like that. Obviously, something like this in my mind doesn't just happen on the spur of the moment. But what I alluded to this morning, um, as it related specifically to Shanann, was the amount of time it takes for one human being to strangle another. And, and perhaps Mr. Blesch wants to comment on the timing as well. That demonstrates an incredible intent to cause someone's death. He did that three times. So to say that this was anything but strangulation other than a deliberate and smothering killing is inaccurate, to say the least. Yes, sir. You described um, Lisa's loss as, uh, it, yeah, you, it took a long time for her to die. Was there any detected wounds on Mr. Wallace? And do you have any injuries to his face? Or? Yeah. It, he had one small mark on his on his neck that was observed uh, the night he was originally interviewed. We don't know if that's related or not, um, but other than that, no. We we uh, had him photographed from head to toe that night, and uh, nothing was observed that would be consistent with injuries to him. Uh, well, even the next day, like when he had the invest or he had the interview with uh, what was it? One of those news broadcasts. Like you could see like marks on his neck that were like right here. He constantly like did this, and he's constantly doing this, including Nicole. As a result of the struggle. Yeah, go ahead. The original plea deal isn't the one you received today, correct? Can you elaborate on what that would have been? To be clear, there was only one, ever one plea deal, and it's that that's that the one that his attorneys brought to us. The uh, the. But didn't the Rusex wanted the death penalty? Deal, for lack of a better word, and and I frankly despise that word. No offense. Um, the uh, agreement that was reached was he would plead guilty to every count we charged him with. In exchange, if he pled guilty to each and every count in the complaint information, we would not seek the death penalty. That was an offer brought to us by the defense. That's when I, I've talked about this before. Uh, Mr. Wren and I um, felt compelled to get on a plane and go s see the Rusics in North Carolina because that was a conversation that I was only going to have with them face to face. Go ahead, Carol. No, no, it didn't. Yeah. Sorry, I meant to. Oh, yeah, 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 we'll go back behind it first. Um, there is some rhetoric that says that they knew it, but apparently this sent his family a week prior to the murders, and he's saying that anything that happened to him was before I was going to take my daughter. Is there any truth to that? Is that legitimate? <coughs> Did he really just do that? You're seeing a lot of puzzled looks up here because none of us have ever heard that. I've never seen that on social media. I confirmed just by the look on his face with Detective Baumover, we have never seen and nor heard of any such letter or its existence before. I'm, I'm sure that if it was in any way, shape, or form real, we would have heard about it. Go ahead. It's not something that I relished. Mr. Wren and I and, and Mr. Miller, the assistant DA, met at my house yesterday for several hours to talk through um, the comments that we wanted to make. And we all recognized that in order for the court to impose a just sentence, a fair sentence under the circumstances, that he had to know as much information as we could give him um, in a respectful fashion. Like I said, he had never read most of that. He had seen an affidavit which had some of the very preliminary information that Detective uh, Baumover uh, put on paper, but I felt like it was important for the judge to understand the horror that was involved in this case, uh, even though it, I I in the end of the sentence, for the defendant, it's not going to matter if he gets one consecutive, two consecutive, three consecutive life sentences. It doesn't matter in the end what number is attached to the end of those. It certainly matters to the Rusick family. It certainly matters to law enforcement and to my office, and I hope it matters to the public when we're saying, you know what, 
there is a sentence that was imposed today that is um, I think he should have got death penalty he took as to each and every one of his victims yeah go ahead GPS. Um, but the how does he know where, where to look? On his work truck, he had a GPS um, device that showed the path of travel that he took when he left his home that morning. It showed at various increments the time that it would have taken him to get to various spots. So the, the CBI, FBI, Frederick Police knew where he had gone immediately after leaving his home. So they that just morning, wanted to confirm it. Which caused some of the initial searches with drones and, and um, foot searches. Um, only after he gave us that information did they have an, a, a more specific place to look. Yeah. Did you hear a text with the worker um, that you could take the morning shift before or after the murder was committed? There were text messages on Sunday afternoon, um, a text message I should say, between he and a coworker talking about the work schedule. The investigation that um, law enforcement conducted indicated that, that n wasn't necessarily um, out of the ordinary, but in conjunction with everything else we know. Is he talking about with NK? In um, his efforts to. Our different coworker. Have time to dispose of the bodies in the manner in which he did. Yeah, go ahead. No. No, none of the above. Mr. Wren met with them. When the court issued its order uh, recognizing them as victims under the Victim Bill of Rights, our office uh, uh, agreed to meet with them, and uh, I had met with them for several hours last night with their attorney that was present in the courtroom today and one of our victim witness assistants. Um, we had a, what I consider to be a good conversation. It was, it was awkward and tough in some respects um, uh, for obvious reasons, but uh, I think ultimately the, they wanted to know the facts that we knew, and they wanted to know what was going to come out today. They uh, had been deprived of that information, and uh, so consistent with our obligations under the statute, uh, I provided them with that information, um, and I, I think it changed their perspective a little bit on what was going to happen today. I do. Um, I, th I think in the middle of that conversation that they came to a realization about the extent of the evidence that we had and why we were making the decisions we made, why we charged them with the things that we charged him with, um, why we were so convinced that he committed these crimes and that it didn't happen the way that uh, Chris Watts had initially told the police. Uh, and, and so Which, in fact, later on, the, the investigators beforehand uh, Tammy Lee and I can't remember the other guy's name offhand, but they go to the actual prison in Wisconsin to go ask him to see if they can get somewhat of more confession. Um, there's rumors that obviously that they wanted to see if there was any more information about Nicole and if he would actually fess up or if he would say anything about her and so forth. So it's definitely very peculiar to hear these guys, which again, I'm not saying that they didn't do their job. It's just, there's a lot of discrepancy on there. If they, could have found more when it comes to NK. The whole end game of this is NK. It's not to be disrespectful towards the Rusiks. It's to find the evidence that somehow, some way, Nicole Kessinger was involved, not just physically, but an accessory to planning to, uh, as you say, uh, persuade Chris into doing so. Because he mentioned before that if it wasn't for her, his family would probably still be here is what he mentioned. Can we believe what a word he says? No, but he had stated that if it wasn't for NK, he probably would have still been married or he would have been separated and his family would have been never murdered. That's the big, huge. O is why did he go ahead and decide murder instead of being di divorced or separated? It's because NK possibly AKA for entertainment and educational purposes only had stated that she wanted to start a new life with Chris and that the kids and Shanann were in the way and that's where the persuasion came into where he decided to annihilate his family instead of separate 
like he should have done. So I, I can't speak for them per se, but my impression from our conversation was that, uh, and, and I think it's consistent with what they said in court today, uh, is that they're, they're in a little bit different place emotionally and, um, as to what they feel their son did, and, and they're, uh, they're trying to get their head around that, which has been difficult and understandably so. Yes, please. The story that you all have had from the affidavit in which he Not yet. falsely claimed that Shanann had responsibility for the death of the two girls. And for those that sit there and state that Shanann is the one that killed the girls, again, how dare you? Um, Shanann would have never hurt those girls. And it's just very disturbing and grotesque to hear that people are blaming Shanann because, one, Chris said it. Two, there's no evidence. And three of all the videos and the social media that you see, Shanann would have never, ever hurt her girls. They were her world. Was the only statement that he gave until his pleas of guilty in the courtroom. No, no. I, well, I, there was no PSI done. There was no reports done between the time of his guilty plea and today's sentencing hearing. Exactly the same. I do apologize, guys. It's very hard to hear them. I can't inf enhance it anymore. So just bear with me. We're we're here to hear what the response is rather than the questions. Absolutely horrifying. All of us standing up here, I think, have dealt with um, a number of serious crimes. But when you take a look at this one and you take a look children. at the death of those children, and like I said this morning, the death of Shanann, none of these things had to happen. And um, the manner in which they were disposed of showed a complete and utter disregard for any kind of human decency at all. Yes, sir. We started out as a representation group. Uh -huh. At what point did Chris realize that Very, very Good early question. on. Um, many of the things that he was saying just weren't quite adding up. The Frederick Police. Like NK? Police Department, the CBI, the FBI did an amazing job from the very outset to begin to focus on him, and rightly so. I think that you saw in a matter of three days a gruesome triple homicide, including a pregnant woman, solved um, is a testament to the efforts of the men and women who participated in this investigation. I think it was very clear from the outset that he was responsible for this, and frankly, was pulling the wool over the eyes of the media, to the extent that anybody in the media believed him, let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, everything from the fact that she was, um, they, I should say, they were um, still in bed sleeping when he left the home um, in the early morning hours to go to work, yet her vehicle was still there, her car keys were still there, her wallet, her, excuse me, her purse, her cell phone, which she never went anywhere without, were all still inside the home. The home, when law enforcement arrived, was locked up tight from the inside. The only way that they, the law enforcement could get in was getting Mr. Watts there with a garage door opener to let law enforcement in. There was no way anyone was going to get into that house as a stranger, do something to that family, and get back out and leave the house locked up in that manner. I think that was probably the most compelling thing that struck law enforcement. Almost Nicole early. Atkinson foiled their plan. He also made some phone calls early the morning of the 13th, first to the children's school and then to a realtor, which were very Stupid. odd and inconsistent with the rest of his conduct that day and what he was telling the media. And NK. There is, and I know that that's going to be still the subject of some probate proceedings. You know, off the top of my head, I can't remember. I apologize. I don't. I don't remember the answer to that question. Kevin. There will be significant restitution because, amongst other things, um, 
the burial expenses for Shanann, the girls, and Nico Sixpences. obviously would be covered under that statute. We recognize that when someone goes to prison for the rest of their life, their earning potential drops off dramatically, but a portion of um, any earnings that he has in the Department of Corrections will be um, used to help pay back that restitution to the Victims' Compensation Fund. Good. Christopher Watts certainly deserved the death penalty. Um, we thought long and hard about it. We had a lot of discussions within our office. And what compelled me to accept the defense's offer was meeting with those folks in North Carolina. Um, when we, when Steve and I sat in their kitchen. But then we found out later on that, that the Rusex wanted the death penalty. Sandy wanted it. Apparently Frankie Sr. So why didn't they do it? And we explained to their family the state of the death penalty in Colorado uh, the possible future of the death penalty as in we knew that an election was coming up and the likelihood that an execution would occur anytime within any of our lifetimes not being uh, a, a high probability and when I brought up the offer that had been extended to us by the defense and when Sandy leaned across the table and looked at me very sternly and said and why haven't you done that yet that helped solidify in my mind that this family needed some closure. We were able to get that for them this morning. Was yes, I just I definitely think that the family deserves closure. They deserve it. But this man is raking resources, raking benefits. He's listening to people that love this man, Team Chris, his mother, his father. They get to see Chris. The Rusex don't get to see Shanann. They don't get to see their grandkids. Why is it okay for Chris to see his parents? I've seen pictures of Chris stay posing pictures with his family. Why is that okay? This man should have got the death penalty. He killed four innocent people and four innocent souls. Thanks yeah, me, ahead. Megan. Bad. Uh, no, there was a, the, they had, um, Shanann had a um, doorbell camera on her um, doorbell. That's the one that showed her arriving back home from the airport in the early morning hours, but there were no other cameras inside the house. There was the baby monitor that has been a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion has been had about. It did not have recording capability. Ha <laughs> ha! Bull crap, because I looked it up. I looked the company up. They had recording capabilities. The back camera, there was a back mount. Why, what, why, where's that information? You can see the back mount. The one that's right behind you? Also not to keep pausing, but the actual, the, the actual camera for the, or the screen where you can watch it, it had in the back of it spots to put chips to record and save recordings. And you can also have cloud data to even save more. So that's a lie in itself. I think she was absolutely instrumental. The fact that she made phone calls to the Frederick Police Department within several hours of um, this act and this disappearance, I think only benefited law enforcement. Being able to have law enforcement respond to that house before the defendant came back, oh, and was a, able to do any other Clackinson. clean up or, or getting rid of evidence, I think was crucial to this investigation. And so again, I wholeheartedly believe that if it wasn't for N A, which is N uh, Nicole Atkinson, Shanann's best friend, this case would have went a whole different aspect because they didn't have time to clean up. And I say they because I still think that N. Okay, and Nicole Atkinson had something to do with said murders. Clean up, physical, mental, whatever have you on Chris. She had some instances in some shape or form. I wish Tammy Lee could investigate and interrogate Nicole K Kessinger. I wholeheartedly believe it would have been different. She's obviously here, and I want to extend our thanks to you um, for... Um, that very timely response, and, and thank you for all you've done. Yes? Do we know the order of the death? No, like I uh, talked Shanann. about earlier, 
Um, we just Bella. weren't able to or ascertain um, time of death as to any of these individuals. So to say that um, Shanann was deceased before the girls or vice versa would simply be speculation. Yeah. Not speculation because you can see it on the camera that Shanann was already deceased before she left. The girls, you can see on camera, the little shadows that, that Bella and Cece were still alive. And once they got to the actual location, Chris stated that Sel or Cece was first and then it was Bella. Bald face lies. He stood up there and he tried to deflect attention away he from did. his own responsibility. Um, he lied to the public. He stood there and said he hopes his children and his wife were safe for probably the better part of two days, not <coughs> exactly where they were, how they had just how they which is disgusting passed away and and how they had gotten to where they were. Yeah. It may be a better question for the Department of Corrections, but what is a day in the life in prison going to look like for Chris Shannon? That's probably a better question for DOC. I know that they're, uh, an exceedingly professional organization will, who will. Um, see to his safety. We'll place him in a play in a in a prison that they feel is most appropriate for him. Why? Um, beyond that, I, I couldn't comment. On that. Makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned that um, the toxicology report for Shannon Allen. Do you did you talk to Crystal Bach about her toxicology report? Or we did not. When he was contacted by law enforcement, and Detective Baumover was in contact with him within a matter of an hour. Um, of the first phone call um, by Ms. Atkinson, there was absolutely no indication that he was under the influence of any drugs and or alcohol that would have justified any kind of question. I know we don't know why exactly, but can you talk about what she may have was she looking to for a teenage lonely father to give him something to do? Like I said this morning, I think that based upon his Google searches, his cell phone searches, some of the things that he was doing while Shanann and the girls were in North Carolina, I think it became pretty obvious that he found a new love interest. And for whatever reason, in his mind, divorce wasn't an option. Um, I can't speak as to why anyone would take the, take the steps that he did, but during the course of our investigation, other than the normal stressors of financial stress that I think most <laughs> of us have. He was an idiot. Um, the occasional marital stress, we couldn't find anything else that was a significant enough motive to annihilate your family. And K. Yeah. In the photo when you talked about the restoration of the factory to you, can you describe the new records that you found to which you were able to see? There was everything from photographs of he and his girlfriend at the Great Sand Dunes in Southern Colorado during the time that Shanann was in North Carolina. Which he had said later on that and some people had stated that they were found naked doing some weird stuff. We knew that they had gone to other museums together. They had um, gone to bars and restaurants together. The, like I said this morning, he had done searches dealing with secluded vacation spots in Aspen that he was planning on apparently taking her to he was researching jewelry he was doing all of that kind of research that you would uh think that somebody in a brand new relationship would he thought he was going to take nk like they thought they were going to get away with this be doing but he was still married with two daughters and a son on the way yes sir Uh, it was not generally in disarray. There was no obvious signs of a struggle like we see in a lot of houses where, where something but traumatic how? occurs. Uh, the master bedroom bed did not have sheets on it. Uh, those uh, sheets had been taken off and placed, uh, part of them had been placed in the trash can, and then apparently Shanann had been wrapped in one of those sheets, or it, that sheet had gone with her out to the oil tank and was found by the drone about the same time that he was being interviewed by the FBI and CBI. And uh, that was a key piece of evidence in uh, us connecting the, the missing persons to him uh, was the fact that the 
the sheet from the bed was found out by the at the oil tank, and that was prior to him confessing that he had taken the bodies there. What do you think the test, his reaction when confronted with that evidence? <coughs> Go ahead, Mr. Counsel. Yeah, that. Um, we were getting that information from the drone search uh, at the same time that he's starting to give us some more information about the nature of his relationship with Shanann and the problems that they, they had been having. We were also getting, or CBI and the FBI were also getting information um, confirming this other relationship, um, the girlfriend, about the same time. So all of that was coming together. Uh, while they were talking to him, that information was being communicated to him or to the investigators, uh, and they started confronting him with that. And that's ultimately when he changed direction with his story dramatically and uh, asked to speak to his father briefly and then told the, the interviewers that uh, at that point he was willing to tell them what happened. And, and ultimately that is when things changed and he admitted to dumping the bodies in the oil tanks. Thank you. Uh, with what he had admitted in the brief written uh, statement that he gave to the court this morning, um, do you think that a legitimate reward for Mr. Ross's confession? None. No remorse. You and I must have seen something different because I didn't see any remorse on his face at all in the courtroom. I saw somebody who I believe felt truly sorry for himself for the circumstances that he now found himself in. Um, I agree with that. With I don't believe that there was any remorse displayed at any point in time for Shanann, Bella, Nico, or Troy. No. Yeah? Um, what do you make of the discrepancy between the story he told about Sanborn of seeing him strangle the children um, versus the fact that he actually smothered them or told him it was not a huge piece of equipment that was in the way? Oh, no. That's a very large discrepancy. That's a, that's a, that is another lie. And, and I keep emphasizing and using that word. We can't in the courtroom. I can here. I can tell you with no, in no uncertain terms, he lied to investigators. He lied to the media. He lied to the public. Uh, the fantastic. So did NK. She lied about everything that she said. Why are we? He literally said that Chris Watts lied. Fantastic. Great. That's right. It's, it's correct. But so did NK. Why is she not being brought to justice the work that was done uh, by the medical examiner in this case by the coroner's office in giving us the information in a very responsible medically accurate way to be able to say no those girls were not strangled and when he sat there and Smothered. in that interview demonstrated what he saw her doing saw her doing and we know that that's not what happened it turned into a very large discrepancy in our We knew that, excuse me, I should say she knew that there was a lot of suspicious behavior. We knew that she was getting alerts on her phone of credit cards being used at a restaurant in North Denver. Lazy dog. At a time that she was in North Carolina. Arizona. amounts of money that one person couldn't possibly probably consume reasonably. We know that she confronted him about that numerous times. We know that... He was never completely forthcoming with her, except we don't know exactly what was shared between the two of them in those early That's morning hours after she got back from Arizona. Yes, sir. Any reason to believe that the pregnancy had anything to do with the actions uh, taken? I can't say that it didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, we knew that Shanann was very excited uh, she very about much. Nico and, and the First upcoming boy. birth. We also know that the reaction of the defendant when he found out was anything less, something less than what you would expect a normal, reasonable father to display when he finds out that he's about to have a son. Yes, sir. Do you know if the pregnancy was No. Beyond his hand, I don't know if there was anything in his hand. What I can tell you is that during the co course of the um, autopsies, there was no fibers or anything like that found in their airways to indicate pillow or blanket or anything like that, so I don't know. I'll let Mr. Fletcher. 
uh, there are some physical signs. We are going to distribute the autopsy reports to you. In the interest of balance with the family present, may I suggest that you look at that and you will see uh, what evidence the forensic pathologist could see. I don't know if I really can. Um, Steve and I and Patrick have had a lot of conversations along with Dave and everybody else who's worked on this case about how exceedingly difficult it has been. The thing I will tell you that gets us up and gets us moving every day is that family sitting right over there. Um, they have been phenomenal to work with under the most extreme circumstances you can imagine. Can I imagine what they've and seen? When we get to work in the morning and Sandy has called and left us a voice message asking for us to call her, that kind of gets your, your blood flowing and, and really wanting to do the best you possibly can for them. Um, there's been a lot of sleepless Why nights. Why not talk? There's been time away from case. families. Even when we are home, sometimes we're not exactly there. Um, when we're having to look at some of the most gruesome things you can imagine. But it's, it's been tough, but it's also why we do the job. And, and um, even though you didn't ask, I'm going to take an opportunity to say it. Um, thank you to Frank and Sandy and Frankie for um, all that you have participated in, all that you have been subjected to. Um, it has been an honor learning a little bit about your family. I think you hit the, the, the most important points in the autopsy as we saw them from a prosecution standpoint. Um, I talked about the, the injury to, to Bella that was uh, indicative of being pushed down into those oil tanks, but he had told us that. Those things that I highlighted in court and that we've talked a little bit about here today were the most important factors uh, in our determination that he had in fact committed what we charged him with. No. Uh, we know that he will head to um, the Denver Regional Diagnostic Center, um, obviously in Denver. They will do some evaluations of him, but beyond that, it will be up to DOC as to whether or not he will be housed at a facility here in Colorado or if he'll be moved out of state. That's completely their, their determination. But why move him out of state? Other question. Yes. Sure. There is always the opportunity through the Victims' Compensation Program for financial assistance with um, any counseling needs um, that are necessary. Most directly, though, if Sandy has any questions or concerns, she can always pick up the phone or call one of us. Yes, sir. It, it may be something that DOC takes in, into consideration as to where they'll house him or what kind of programs they'll put him in. But from our perspective, it doesn't change anything that happened today. Yeah, he's going live. Yes, sir. I'm glad you used the word rumor because I think that's the vast majority of what we saw on social media was just that, false rumor. Um, I'm not aware of any other confirmed relationships that the investigation uncovered which the would male. offer any insight into why this occurred other than the one, the, the girlfriend that I talked about this morning. Yes, sir. All of them are disruptive to our process. And, and I don't say that uh, crassly. When we are out, when Dave and, and his team are out conducting interviews of witnesses and uh, an individual's memory might be tainted by something inaccurate that they read on a social media site, that causes us to think, okay, how much do we really, how much is, is true of what somebody's saying? What did they see? What do they hear? Or what are they surmising or guessing because of something that they read on, on social media? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I can generally tell you that the investigation included interviews of all of Shanann's co-workers, all of her close friends, relatives. Um, were, uh, co but then why did Tammy say there is so much more evidence, so much more interviews that they just literally stopped? Why did Tammy say that? Co-workers of the defendant, relationships of the defendant, neighbors. Who am I missing? Generally, I think those are the categories. Yeah, family members uh, of both Shanann and the defendant. A long, long list of interviews. I could ask Dave to go through and recite them all, but he might miss some. Any other questions? Yes. Is it possible that they I have asked them on the way down. They did not want to make a, a statement today, and I, I hope you understand. The statements that they made in court, I think, were probably about as difficult as they could possibly imagine. So I appreciate you asking. They wanted to be here. They just didn't want to make a statement. Yes. It will be an ongoing amount. Within 91 days, we will file a motion with the court asking for any restitution or any uh, cost that we can uh, recover in restitution. As of that, 91 days will be asked for and ordered. Um, All here is money, money, money. There money. will be ongoing costs if there are any ongoing counseling or, or therapy costs, and we will ask the court to keep that um, the possibility of free future restitution open. As or well. how about just give it to them for free? Yes. As soon as I stop answering questions. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you for your time. So, I don't know about you guys. I definitely think there's a lot of discrepancies up in the air and confusions and contradictions. I honestly think the death penalty should have been implemented. Um, I don't think this man should be serving life sentences. I think he should have been put to death. Um, and then we found out later on that apparently Sandy Rusek and uh, Frankie Sr. wanted the death penalty. Can I say that for 100% certainty? No, because it, it might be speculating of rumors. Um, but I wholeheartedly believe that that man deserves the death penalty instead of what uh, we've seen. Um, watching this man and so forth like that, I can't honestly say what I see because I'm not a professional. I am not educated in criminal justice. I'm not educated in all things court and so forth like that. I just think there is things that have not been said, things that have been looked at. Again, Tammy Lee said that things were stopped. Things were not done. Why? So definitely leave your comments down below. Let me know your guys' theories, your guys' opinions. Please, again, be respectful about how you present it in the comments. Um, we definitely don't want to bash or be negative towards Shanann or her children as well, which I've seen, unfortunate on some other channels and uh, social medias. Um, again, I thank you guys very much for your time and make sure you guys subscribe, comment, like, and share. Also stay to the end where you guys can see some other playlists that you guys can watch and binge more crime or on the other content when it comes to channels of Wookie. And we'll see you guys in the next one. So please take care, be safe, and as always, keep nerding on, and we will see you guys next time.